Hey, Kevin here, top one financial advisor and best-selling author, and we are here to talk about the stock market. I got a message that said, hey, can you do a review of BlackRock? I said, yeah, because it's on my watch list. It's a company I'm very, very interested in, and I think you know, we do want to take the channel in a direction to do a few of these in-depth reviews of companies every month or so. Keep an eye out, out for that. You definitely want to be on the email list because I'm announcing something pretty cool. But aside from all of that, this is the, the style of thing that we want to do. We want to deep, do deep dives into companies, decide whether or not we like them or not. And BlackRock is a very, very interesting one. It's been on my watch list for about two months or so. So let's start out with who they are, how powerful they are, and get into some of the things that I really, really like about the company. So when I say power, I mean like real crazy levels of, of power. Um, so BlackRock is an asset manager. They do three things, but two things are most notable, at least to me. ETFs, they are the people, when we say asset managers, they create the ETFs that me and you and almost everybody invest in. In fact, 80% of all ETF revenue, because there are small, small fees that people pay in most cases for the ETFs, go to one of three asset managers. BlackRock is the biggest at 35% of all ETF revenue in the U.S. goes to BlackRock. So we've got, I think it's BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. Those are the, the big three. 80% of all ETF revenue goes to those three players, with again BlackRock being at the top at 35%. But get this, and I got some notes here. They have currently, or from the time that we pulled this research, $9.5 trillion with a T. $9.5 trillion under management, and they own close to 5%, 5% of every U.S. company. I'm going to say that again. Right now, they currently own close to 5%, at least 5% of every U.S. company. Now, why do they do that? Well, again, they are the people that create and sell um, ETFs. ETFs are exchange-traded funds and baskets of stocks that we get to invest in and makes investing a lot simpler for us. So if I want to invest in the top 500 companies or the biggest 500 companies, I would invest in a BlackRock fund called IVV tracks the S&P 500, which means that BlackRock has to go buy pieces of every of these 500 companies and more. They've also made strong push to um, ESGs as environmental um, standards and governance, so like green energy funds, um, whatever theme you are thinking about, a tech fund, a momentum fund, whatever it is, they are creating these and this is how they make the bulk of their money. Now, the other interesting thing, too, is they've made a strong pivot to technology, which obviously that's a smart thing to do. They have a platform called Aladdin. It does not make that much money compared to what they make on their, their advisory fees and their ETF fees. Um, however, it's the fastest growing part of their business. And I want to say I don't have it here, um, but it's close to doubled, if I'm not mistaken. I think they may like... 400 million three years ago, and now it's over a billion dollars in revenue. And this is the biggest portion of what they're um, what they're growing, and really where they want to continue to to move the focus in technology. And what Aladdin does, from what I gather from their reports, is that it helps with um, risk management. So it helps other advisory firms understand here's the risk of investing in X, Y, and Z. They do what's called Monte Carlo analysis. I'm not going to get into that part of it. it basically runs 10,000 scenarios and says, you know, if you invest in this, at these 10,000 possible scenarios, you know, you have a 20% chance of losing everything or something like that. That's just a super dumbed down version. They're doing many versions of these. They just launched another one last year as well. And again, one of the largest segments of their business. Don't quote me on the numbers on how much they're making because um, I don't have that. Their report is 130 some odd pages. Okay. Um, however, it's a small but fast growing portion of their business. Now, that's what they do. I like the revenue model. I am a fan of companies that have easy recurring revenue. And I love companies that have a good business case and business logic to, to stay around, right? I'm not the biggest fan of GameStop. Um, not because it's a mean stock, but you don't really make anything right now, presently. You don't make the games. 
uh, games are becoming more digital now, right? If I could ever get my hands on a PS5, I would just get it, download the games, I don't have to walk into a store and there's nothing for me to trade in. There's no real logic for it unless they do something differently. Well, here's the thing. Everybody's on index funds now, and we've been on index funds, and we're probably not going to go anywhere from index funds because they're very, very good, um, easy ways to start investing. You can do fractional shares with, um, with ETFs, index funds, and it's just there's no re rhyme or reason why there wouldn't be one, uh, why we wouldn't do this in the future and wouldn't continue doing it. But the second thing is understanding risk in a complicated situation or in a complex space. What do I mean by that? Risk is getting harder to understand as an investor. It used to be you just had the stock market and that was it. You didn't have to worry about nothing else. But now you've got crypto. As more people are investing in cryptocurrencies, hence the shirt, um, it makes it harder to understand, well, if this happens, where do people move their money? It used to be just gold. That's not the case anymore. They're going to crypto. They're going to NFTs. I don't know what's going to come out in the next five years because crypto and NFTs were not it. <laughs> This was not a thing for the average investor. And their software is helping other companies and other investing managers or investment managers to understand that risk and use that software and make those investing decisions. So they've got, they build their own ETFs, people are buying those, then they've got the software, and those are two of their biggest pieces of business, as well as ed regular advisory fees and, and things like that. I like that. I like that a lot. I love the technology piece. I love having what I like to call like that company stack, but really just diverse revenue streams. Uh, you, you got bread and butter. That's your advisory fees. That's your ETFs. But I don't want that to be your only thing, even though it's a very, very good business to be in right now. Um, having that Aladdin platform and having something that you can say about the company that's growing is good because once you get so big, that's pretty much it. And as people start to retire, they're actually going to sell off some of those funds. So at some point, right, that revenue is going to either stagnate and just kind of stay still or drop. I don't really see that in their future in the short term. However, having Aladdin to offset that and to increase revenues is something that's really, really important for them. So that's what I do like about it. They do have momentum. and That's something that is important for me as well. I want to invest in companies that are currently moving in the right direction. Right now, or as of now, they're up about 57% over the past year, which is obviously incredible. And then let me see what they were in the last six months. Last six months, um, I'm sorry, it's the last three months. Sorry. Last six months, they're up about 15%, um, going on 16%, which is obviously pretty solid. Right now, they're at about $935 a share. That, that feels expensive. Thankfully, we can do fractional shares in most investing accounts or most brokerage accounts, which is great because that is one expensive stock. Um, now, just because it's that high didn't really mean all that much because, again, we can get fractional shares. Google is, I don't know, $1,200 or whatever it is today. I don't care. I put in whatever money I got into it on Fridays, right? <laughs> so you can take the fractional shares, continue to invest, and that's how things should work as you're continuing to build up your portfolio. The other thing is, so we talked about talked about how they make money, right? They've got ETF revenue, they've got Aladdin, they've got the software revenue, so we've gotten that. Um, we've talked about them having momentum, so it is moving in the right direction. They do have products and services that I think, I wouldn't call it a, a mind reader, where the more you use it, the better it gets. We'll call this, um, they're very good at understanding the market, and understanding what people are looking for, which I think is extremely important too. As people have looked for more places to invest, based on social causes, based on diversity, based on the environment. They've put out ETS to really speak to people, which is good because as an investor, if I want to invest in only companies that are led by women CEOs, if I only want to invest in companies that have you know green energy or help help fix the planet or whatever, I want to I don't have time to look for all those companies and I don't know which ones are good or not. It's going to take me a lot of time to do that. If I can get an ETF and pay a really tiny fee, then boom, I'm, I'm good to go. For example, CNBC did a video on, on BlackRock, which I would encourage you to watch as well. If we pull some of those notes from there, is that it cost three cents, three pennies for every $1,000 that you're investing in some of their funds, not all of them, which is, I, I would take that trade off every day, right? I get 300 stocks or 500 stocks when I'm looking at the S&P 500. I'm only paying you three cents a year for every $1,000 I put in there. Take it. Let's take it, right? 
So if they're creating these other funds that people are really interested in, again, energy, green energy, regular energy, whatever, they've got all the flavors for you and that's how they make their money. And I like that they're forward thinking in that as well as any technology piece. Let's talk about how they make money. Now the all-star piece is, what I'd like to say is, do you either have all-star leadership, do you have a CEO that has been proven, been trusted, and is moving the company in the right direction, and or do you have employees that help to drive the business and that employees that like being there and want to work for the company and are those com are those companies like revered, meaning you're pulling in the best talent? Why is that important? Your human capital is the most important thing in any business. The people create the products, the people create the messages, the people create the things that have me to buy, right? If you've got people that don't want to work there, the service is not going to be great, right? The end results are not going to be great at the end of the day. There is a difference while Walmart is Walmart and Target is Target. All right? There's a difference, right? We, everybody like they Target. I don't know anybody who really enjoys going into a Walmart. And I could argue that the stock market somewhat reflects that to a degree. It's not the, it's not the most important thing in the world, but it does mean something, okay? There's a reason why you know Elon Musk and you know why he's the now, as of today again, the richest man in the world based on Tesla. If he wasn't Elon, whether I like it or not, if he wasn't the person he was, I'm, I'm entirely sure that Tesla would be where it is. Okay, so anyway, going back to the all-star factor of this, um, Larry Fink is the CEO. He's been around since the 80s. Actually, BlackRock was founded in 1988, one year before I was born. And this is something, you know, having that level of stable leadership, having this this move from we do ETS, we do advisory, but we're also moving to technology is extremely important. I like that move. Um, Larry Fink, from, at least from what I have been reading, is very well respected all across the world. Because again, this is a really powerful company. Um, $9.5 trillion is a lot of money, right? And it's all under um, his management and the company's management. So they do have solid management. They do have good employees, from what I can tell. Um, they also have in their annual report from 2020, um, the average length of how long people stay at the company. I'm scrolling through their report real quick. Um, I think it was like 6.8 years or something like that, which is relatively long in this day and age. As I know, my demographic millennials, you might get a year and a half or two before we bounce to the next job. Um, so six and a half, almost seven years is pretty good. Uh, they also pay a dividend. I don't know exactly. Let me see if I can actually pull that up for you guys. Um, dividend yields is above 1%. You know, I'm not super, super high on dividends. Um, dividend yield right now is 1.76%. Um, so if, if for every one share, you're going to get $16 in dividends, which is pretty solid um, if you own that one share. If you have a share, you get half the um, dividend. You guys know how that goes. Um, so that, that's pretty much it. Those are the big things about BlackRock. They fall into the financial space, but they're not exactly a bank. So if you are thinking, like me, because I'm looking to December, trying to make some decisions or thinking about making some decisions and some shifts, if you have a Goldman Sachs and BlackRock, those are, I'll, I'll say this. So there's a difference between a Capital One, a JP Morgan, a... Goldman Sachs and a BlackRock. I would say Goldman Sachs and BlackRock are closer in business nature than it is to to a Capital One. Capital One is mostly retail, mostly credit cards, mostly auto loans, whereas Goldman Sachs is investment banking, taking companies public and retail, right? Um, but not so much, not as much uh, as an asset manager and a creator of ETFs or technology platforms. They're all in the same sector, but you can see how each of these are still different. Capital One and Ally are very, very close to each other, right? With the, on the, the pretty much we only do banking side of things. And not all they do, but very, very close to it, where you have a Goldman Sachs and then you still have a distance to where BlackRock is. So in theory, you could invest in all four of those, um, but you don't want to overweight yourself into one particular sector. But for me, for what I'm trying to do, I really, really like BlackRock and I have to figure out how to fit this in my own personal portfolio of do I need to switch many companies out? Do I need to just insert this one and just have a bigger portfolio, which is fine. Um, I got to figure out what I got to do with it. Um, but based on that, these are the things or these have been the things I like. 
It's obviously up 15% the last six months, up close to 60% in the last year, which is good. They have growing and improving revenue in terms of their Aladdin platform, which again, makes a tiny sum now, but it has significantly grown, as well as the ETF revenue, which is gonna be around. I don't see that changing. When you own 5% of damn near every US company, you gonna be around. They're not going bankrupt no time soon, um, which if you're an investor is something that's pretty good. You've got the all-star leadership and then you've got different business lines and different uh, sources of revenue, which is really, really important when you're looking to invest. Um, when you don't have that, you end up like a Zoom. Well, all you got primarily is video calls. That's all you got. Right. You, you gotta diversify a bit and um, you know when the market moves you can you have different products to pull from and BlackRock is getting a lot better at that they're doing that now but they're in a business that's not going anywhere Whereas Zoom, eh, not so much all right now that is the end of this video let me know what you think of these styles of breakdowns do you like it do you not like it do you want more content like this if so let me know in the comments like let's talk Let's talk. I got a few people that we talk almost every day on these videos. You need to be one of them, right? Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button as well. And that's it for me. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.